Oliver Twist, or, The Parish Boy's Progress, Charles Dickens's second novel, was published as a serial from 1837 to 1839, and as a three-volume book in 1838. Oliver Twist portrays unromantically the sordid lives of criminals, and exposes the cruel treatment of the many orphans in London in the mid-19th century. Oliver Twist is born into a poor and unfortunate life from birth. He's orphaned, since his father has always been absent and his mother, Agnes, died in childbirth. He's raised in a workhouse, where his living conditions are dire, and he's robbed of a gold name locket. He has very little food, and very little comfort in his life, and he spends the first nine years of his existence there under the supervision of Mrs. Mann, who keeps most of the money she gets from the parish for the children to herself. When Oliver is nine, Mr. Bumble, the parish beadle, whisks Oliver away to have him work picking and weaving oakum. He stays there for six months, again with very little food. When the boys decide one day to draw lots, where the loser must ask for another portion of food, Faith decides to pick Oliver. He trembles to the master and asks, Please, sir, I want some more. There's a great commotion and the board of gentlemen offer five pounds to any person that will take this boy on as an apprentice. Mr. Gamfield, a chimney sweep, takes up the offer but is denied at the last moment because of a kind magistrate refusing to sign the contract because of Oliver's pleading. When an undertaker, Mr. Sowerberry, finally takes the offer, Oliver is given into his service. He treats the boy better, and because Oliver always seems to look sad, even uses the boy as mourner at children's funerals. His wife is unfortunately not so kind to Oliver, and often mistreats him. Noah Claypole, a fellow apprentice, who's jealous of Oliver because of his favourable position in Mr. Sowerberry's eyes, also bullies him, together with Charlotte, the maidservant of the house, who is in love with Noah. Noah taunts Oliver one day with a remark about his mother, and Oliver attacks the boy. Mrs. Sowerberry is quick to take the side of Noah, as they beat the boy. She later convinces her husband, and Mr. Bumble, who has been sent for, to beat Oliver also. In his room, Oliver weeps and escapes the next day, heading for London, hoping for things to get better. On his trip, he meets Jack Dawkins, a pickpocket, known as the Artful Dodger, and his friend, Charlie Bates. Oliver is very naive so when the artful Dodger gives him a free meal and tells him of a gentleman in London who will give Oliver lodging for free, he consents right away. The gentleman he's brought to is the Jewish criminal, Fagan. Caught without even knowing it, he stays with them, believing they make wallets and handkerchiefs. When Fagan acts like an English gentleman browsing shops, and the boys try to pick everything from his pockets, without being noticed, he considers this strange. Oliver is also challenged to play this game, and when he succeeds, He's given a shilling and is taken out on the street with Charlie Bates and the artful Dodger. When they steal the handkerchief of a gentleman called Mr. Brownlow, Oliver finally realizes that they pickpocket. When Mr. Brownlow spots that he got something stolen, he sees Oliver run away, and naturally thinks he was the thief, and as more people join the chase, Oliver is caught. When he's brought before the magistrate, Mr. Brownlow starts suggesting he's unsure about his guilt. The court then hears a bookstall holder declare that the Dodger stole the handkerchief, and not Oliver, as Oliver passes out in the courtroom. Mr. Brownlow takes him home and cares for him. Together with his housekeeper, Mrs. Bedwin, he notices how Oliver looks a lot like the wife of a deceased friend of his. The boy heals quickly, and blossoms from all this kindness. But Fagan decides that Oliver has to be brought back, since he might tell the police about them. When Oliver is sent off with five pounds to pay for some books, a girl called Nancy is sent out to intercept and bring back Oliver. The thieves quickly take the five pounds and his nice clothes, and Oliver flees to tell the police, 
but he's quickly brought back by the artful Dodger, Charlie and Fagan. Only Nancy is kind to him, keeping him clear from the beating of Fagan and Sykes, Nancy's boyfriend. Fagan forces Oliver into a burglary, to which Nancy helps convince him, whilst telling him she'll help him if she can. Sykes, threatening to kill the boy if he doesn't do as told, puts Oliver through a small window and has him unlock the front door. But the people in the house notice Oliver and shoot him, wounding his left arm. After Sykes abandons him, in the end Oliver is cared for by the people he was supposed to rob, Miss Rose and her guardian, Mrs. Maley. Mysterious man, Monks, meets with Fagan, to discuss a plan to discredit Oliver. They agree that he should certainly not find out more about his past, since Monks seems to be related to Oliver in some way. Meanwhile, back in Oliver's hometown, Mr. Bumble is unhappily married to Mrs. Corney, the matron of the workhouse where Oliver stayed. Mr. Bumble meets Monks in a pub, and tells him his wife might be able to share more information for a price and they meet up, and she shares all she knows, and hands him the locket and ring, proving Oliver's parents. He drops them into the river flowing under his place and shares these events with Fagan, unaware that Nancy is overhearing. Mr. Brownlow is back in London, and when Oliver sees him, he has him meet the Maleys. Nancy is now ashamed of her actions and worried for Oliver's safety, so she goes and sees Rose Maley, telling her she will be able to meet up with her at London Bridge every Sunday night. When Nancy tries to go out, Sykes doesn't allow her, and she's vague in her reasons, which makes Fagan realize something is going on. He's convinced he needs to find out her secret. Noah's relationship with the undertaker Mr. Sowerberry has gotten so bad, that he stole money from him and fled to London with Charlotte, and he joins Fagan's gang under the name Morris Bolter. Noah is sent to spy on Nancy, and finds out about her meeting with Rose and Mr. Brownlow on the bridge, where she tells them about why she wasn't there the week before and how they can save Oliver. Fagan shares this news with Sykes, manipulating the story, so it sounds like Nancy informed on him, not sharing she tried to ensure he wouldn't get into trouble. Sykes beats her to death in anger and flees to escape the police and his own feelings. He's haunted by visions of her and finally returns to London wanting to steal money from Fagan and run to France. He accidentally kills himself by hanging, when trying to lower himself from a rooftop, hunted down by a crowd, angry at Nancy's murder. Around this time, Mr. Brownlow forces Monks, who's called Edward Leaford, to listen to the story that connects him and Oliver as half-brothers, or get handed over to the police. Their father, Edwin Leaford, was a friend of Brownlow. He left the miserable marriage with the mother of Monks, only to meet a 17-year-old girl, Agnes, whom he fell in love with, but they had a secret relationship. When Edwin left for Rome and died there, he left Agnes, his guilty love, as she died giving birth to Oliver. Mr. Brownlow had a picture of Agnes and started wondering about how much they looked alike. Monks, meanwhile, tried to destroy his brother, to get all of their father's will. Monks moves to the New World, squanders all the money he has left, reverts to crime and dies in prison. Fagan is arrested and sentenced to the gallows. The night before he dies, Oliver and Mr. Brownlow visit him, trying to retrieve papers from Monks, but Fagan is lost in a world of his own fear. Monks also revealed that Rose was the younger sister of Agnes, and Oliver's aunt. She marries Harry Maley and Mr. Brownlow adopts Oliver. Noah cooperates with the police to catch Fagan, and becomes a police informer. The Bumbles lose their rank and are driven to poverty, finally ending up working in the workhouse themselves. All the members of Fagan's gang have bad endings, except for Charlie Bates, who, horrified by the Sykes's murder of Nancy, decides to become an honest man, moving to the country and doing well for himself there. If you enjoyed this, 
Please like and subscribe.